Hello everybody, welcome back to our virtual classroom and another lesson in our trades training video series. I'm Joe Carswell and this session is one of a series on the tape measure. This one's going to cover making measurements or reading measurements on a tape measure related to inches and fractions. So let's get into it. To start with, we need to talk about the process of making measurements or reading a tape. What I would tell you is to focus on the marks first. And that means that there's a lot of numbers, a lot of noise on a tape measure. We want to focus on those marks. And specifically, we want to find our whole inch mark, the last whole inch on that tape that is relevant to our measurement. Once we find that whole inch, we can find the number associated with it. And we can then move on to the second part of our measurement, which is the fraction. Now we need to identify, once we found the whole inch, which fraction is going to be added to that to make our measurement. Here I have a, a, a close up of an inch and look at these marks on this tape. This is standard on tape measures. As you notice, there are different lengths of marks. This is very important. Each length of mark is going to identify a different fraction. The shortest fraction is going to be a 16th. That is going to be associated with the shortest mark. The next size up, that's going to be an eighth mark. Then you have a quarter, then you have a half, and your longest mark is going to be a whole inch. As you can see, if you can identify the lengths of your marks and learn them and associate them with the right fractions, it makes it much easier to read your tape measure. Keep in mind, if you can learn one inch on a tape measure, you can apply it to anywhere on that tape measure at any dimension. So let's get into the specifics of an inch. Here we have an inch space on a tape measure. This is going to fall in between the longest marks on that tape. This is going to be duplicated the entire length of the tape measure. And the numbers, the only thing that will change is the numbers associated with that mark will change. As you can see here, here are our numbers. It sits to the left of this mark. You can notice that mark carries all the way across the width of the tape. Inch marks are fairly easy to find. I don't find that students struggle with inch marks but the problem is is you have to identify the closest number to that mark you have to remember where zero is zero is at your hook you're always reading up to your mark and then you're going to find the number associated with it here's two inches here is three inches notice where the number is there's four inches and there is five inches so this is how we find and identify our full inches now we can move on to our fractions Fractions are going to fall in between all of the inch marks. As you can see here, our half inch marks are right in between or right in the middle of any two inch marks. That is an easy place to focus to find those half inch marks. Also, the length of that half inch mark is one of the longest fraction marks in between the inches. These are fairly easy for students to identify and they stand out when you look at the tape. Here we have two half inch parts. So I'm going to talk a lot about the tape measure and the marks, but we also need to talk about the parts of the tape or the parts of the inch, let's say. So if, if I have a whole inch and I divide it in half, I have two half parts. That is going to leave us with only one half inch mark because the right in the middle divides those two parts. So here we have our half. We can move on now to our quarters. Here we have quarters. And we've, if you see here in the faded arrows are pointing out the marks that we've already identified. You see your whole inch marks identified here and your half inch marks. Our quarters are gonna fall in between or right in the middle of our halves and our whole inch marks. This is an easy place to look for them. They're a little shorter than your half inch mark, but not as short as some of the other ones. These tend to be easy for students to learn. If you can't find these uh, immediately, these will start to be more visible the more you look at and study the tape. So here we have this idea of spaces. If you have an inch and you divide it into four parts, four equal parts, you're going to have this configuration here, but there's only two marks that we have not called out with other names that we're going to call quarter inches. So this is, as you see here, the one quarter inch and the three quarter inch marks. 
all the other marks that land on quarter inch or in between these parts have already been given names. The one right in the middle is our half inch mark. So we're going to move on from our quarters to a more challenging mark. This is going to be our eighth inch marks. This is where the work starts and you have to learn and study these. There's only four eighth inch marks per inch that we're going to call by name. Here I've divided this inch into eight equal parts. In between each of these eight equal parts is a mark. As you can see, in between, in the center of this inch, we have our half inch. We've already called that out. It's, we've given it a name. In between the first, the number two and number three eighth, we called that out as a quarter. There's one on the high side there, we call that out as three quarters. There are only four other marks that we have not given names to. These are going to be named as our eighths. And it's gonna go like this. Here is one eighth, okay? That falls in between the first and second parts, equal parts of eighths. On the high side here, we have another one. That's in between those two eighths. We have one on either side of the half inch mark here. There's our three eighths, there's our five eighths. And keep in mind the eighth inch falls right in the middle of between a whole mark or a quarter or a quarter and a half. And this is a good way to start citing and learning your eighths. Another way to do it would be to look at our sixteenths. So our sixteenths are going to be all the marks left that we haven't talked about. Every mark on this tape is going to get a specific name. We're always going to use that name and call it. If we look at our 16th, we've got, this is a close up, we've got 16 equal parts here, just like we did with our eights and our quarters and our halves. So these 16 equal parts have spaces or, or lines in between them, and those lines become our marks for our tape measure. So here we have our first 16th. These are the shortest marks on the tape. They have the shortest length, and they, they tend to disappear in the C of marks on this tape measure. They're the hardest ones you'll learn, and they do require some skill and uh, experience and study to get them right. So if you go one up from your whole inch mark, that is always 1 16th. We can call that 1 16th. If you come one down from any whole inch mark, that's always going to be 15 sixteenths. So if you find your half inch mark, you can, indi you can index a 7 sixteenths on the low side and a 9 sixteenths on the high side. So out of 8 sixteenth marks, we need to learn just by finding your whole inch marks and your half inch marks, you have learned half of those sixteenths. If you want to find the other four, you can reference them by counting up from your whole inch marks three, that would be three sixteenths, or you could come down one from a quarter. That would make sense. Sometimes that makes sense in my mind. You can go up one from a quarter. That would be five sixteenths. Here we have, if we find our three quarter mark, one down from that is 11 sixteenths, and one up from that is 13 sixteenths. Keep in mind, you can always count down from a whole mark, or you can count up from a whole mark. And in our review, we're going to go through this in a different way, which may make more sense to you. So I want to do a mark by mark review of an inch on a tape measure to make sure that we get this right. And I want to do it in a linear fashion. So we're going to start at the bottom and work our way up to the next inch. Our first mark is going to be our whole inch mark, and it's going to have a number beside it that's associated with which inch that is on the tape measure. Here we have our first 16th mark and these are going to, I'm going to read these in 16th so every 16th space is going to have a different name so here we have our first 16th that's 1 16th if we go up one mark from there that's 1 8th which also is 2 16ths here we have 3 16ths we're going to call it 3 16ths the next one is 1 quarter inch this mark is longer on the tape but it actually is equal to four sixteenths spaces. Here we have five sixteenths. We're going to call it five sixteenths. The next one is six sixteenths spaces, but it's actually going to be called on the tape three eighths. Here we have seven sixteenths. That's the name we're going to give it. Eight sixteenths of spaces, but we know this one from our 
review before that is a half of an inch it's the longest mark very visible and falls right in between the whole inch marks this one is 9 16 and that's the name we're going to give it we're not going to call this one 10 16 although that's the space on the tape that it takes up we're going to call this 5 8 this is 11 16 here is 12 16 worth of parts on the tape or spaces we're going to call it three quarters here we have 13 16 that's the name we're going to give it this one is 7 8 although it is 14 parts of our 16 on the tape measure here we have 15 16 that one you notice is one down from our whole inch mark that's the last joint in between for our 16s and we're going to call it 15 16 let's do some actual measuring here i'm going to call this out we have an arrow pointing at this tape and let's read this tape measure using the rules and information we've just gone over this one's pretty easy i'm going to cite it our last whole inch mark falls right on that arrow the line carries all the way across the tape and the closest number to it is five so this reads and is five inches here we have an arrow pointing to a long line that falls right in the middle of two whole inch marks we're going to call that a half so i cite my first or last whole inch mark which is one and i'm going to add a half to it we're going to call this an inch and a half i'm going to call this it's right in between a half and a whole inch mark those are my quarters so this is two and three quarters inches so here's a little bit of a challenge we're going to find our last whole inch that's going to be four inches and we're going to figure the fraction up from there so you can count up from your whole inch that would be six sixteenth parts which tells me that it's three eighths here we have a very small mark and we know that these are sixteenths so I've immediately identified it as a sixteenth the question is which one is it now so we find our last whole inch mark that's two and we can count up from that if you want so we can count one two three four five six seven sixteenths an easier way to do that would be find your half inch mark and if you can memorize it the seven uh, seven sixteenths is always on the low side and the nine sixteenths is always on the high side there's not one way to do this it's just whatever way works for your brain so here we are pointing at another very small mark I know immediately it's a sixteenth we're going to find our last whole inch which is three inches and we're going to count up from there that's the easiest way to do this you can count one two three marks that's going to be three sixteenths so it's three and three sixteenths inches our last one is going to be another sixteenth see how they're the short marks these ones I immediately know it's a sixteenth I just don't know which one yet so I'll find the four inches that's my last whole inch mark and then we're going to you could count down from five or you could find your quarter inch mark and then you could name it from there i'm going to call this four and eleven sixteenths this is a list of terms used in this presentation and as always guys i like to stress this idea of learning the language of building and using it on the job site knowledge is power and it can only make us build better so i hope you've learned something about this mystery of all these marks on this tape measure it there is no shortcuts there is one way that will make sense to you and you need to look at it from all different angles study this practice it and only experience will get you to the point to where at a glance you can read this accurately and consistently time and time again so thanks for watching that's a wrap this video is a production of trade skills you all rights reserved